Joe Burrow was back at practice for the Cincinnati Bengals. He didn't practice, but we saw him out there to take in the sights of the Bengals joint practice with the Green Bay Packers. We'll get into that and all the takeaways from the joint practice. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lesko. He's your host, James Rapine. The joint practice has just ended, and if you're new to the show, you can find us on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcast. If you subscribe, it's really easy to come in every day because you'll get those notifications. We'll be on your front page when we upload a new video. We're every day bringing you content about your Cincinnati Bengals as we go through training camp, as we're coming up on our preseason game, as we've got the regular season coming up, and the big story today, James, is Joe Burrow out there on the practice field, bucket hat, leg sleeve, all the good stuff going on. And it's the first time in about two weeks that we've seen Joe Burrow on the practice field. First time I've seen him since I've been in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. which is great because it's nice to be able to see the franchise in person. And you should have been out there. I traveled all the way from Canada for this moment, Joe. You should have. You should have. It wasn't for that moment. Your trip has been made. It was, it was a good day. But it was mostly good because Joe Burrow was out there. The, uh, everyone else got to see the walk that I've tried to describe on this podcast. The lack of a hitch. I think he's getting better every day. I, From what I gather, he's, uh, he's not doing much as, as far as throwing or anything like that. They really are shutting him down. And I think... Just getting him out there to to practice for the first time, it uh, it was exciting for him, even though he didn't get to participate. Because today would have been a day where he would have loved to be out there, obviously, a slice and dice the Packers. I think that's what he would have done. That wasn't necessarily what the Bengals' offense did end up doing, which we can get into later. But the significance of this, it's pretty simple. He stood on his feet for a substantial amount of time, uh, walked across the practice field to the offensive drills and clearly wanted to show he knew fans were out there and season ticket holders were out there and the Packers were out there and his teammates and gestured uh, to some of those teammates that he was all right. So, no, I I think he's doing well. And uh, I know, and we're going to talk about the the Bengals defense, I know Joe Burrow thinks that this Bengals defense is really, really talented. And that stood out to him during today's session. So that's uh, one little tidbit that I don't think you're going to get anywhere. It's a good tidbit that you can find only here on Locked On Bengals. And some other just quick notes as far as who was there in practice. And, oh, the other thing I was going to say, no cart. Joe Burrow wasn't gingerly stepping out of a golf cart. No. Like he did with the appendectomy. He walked, as you mentioned, to the practice field, across the practice field, up and down the field as the drills moved around, staying with the quarterbacks and moving around. Looked pretty good. You can see the video, I'm sure, for yourself. Make your own judgments. Do your own frame-by-frame analysis of the gate and the calf. That's all we're going to talk about with Joe Burrow, right? Anything else you wanted to add there? No, not really. I think it's great that he's out there. I think it helps everybody just to see him out there. And so that's part of it for sure. Mm -hmm. I also think that because Zach was asked about the several weeks comment, if there's any timeline, and he just keeps going back to uh, it's several weeks from when I said several weeks, and he did that to me last week, and that's just what we're going to get. That's fine. That said, I think Joe Burrow is on track to be ready to go week one. Would not shock me at all if he's practicing. I I continue to say, and in my head think, end of preseason. And after that final preseason game, I think we'll see Joe Burrow start to ramp it up a little bit. Now, it may take some time, but I, I think that'll be it. We'll see. Because I think the first passes that he throws are going to be behind closed doors, but no one can watch besides maybe a coach or doctor or two. Yeah, that might be the case indeed. And that would be in line with like a four to six week recovery, something in that range if they give him extra time, which is something Zach Taylor said they were doing with Alex Kappa, who didn't practice today. Just trying to give him an extra few days. The goal, according to Zach Taylor in his press conferences, get him back on Sunday. Others that didn't practice today, Logan Wilson, 
was out there but wasn't dressed for practice. And T. Higgins did not participate in team work. 11 on 11, 7 on 7s, as far as I saw. He didn't. Okay. Uh, I didn't see 7 on 7s super well, which is why I wanted to clarify. But no T. Higgins in team work today with the Packers. Either those were the big absences that I can think of. And then there was an absence on the Green Bay side after he got in a fight twice uh, with different Bengals and different instigators, I think. But uh, after Elton Jenkins you know, got into two scuffles, he uh, was escorted off the practice field. He was. He got into it with Jermaine Pratt and a few other defensive linemen on the Bengals, and it became a big brawl. It was during a non-video portion of practice, so we do not have video. I'm sure you've seen fan video, though. Uh, out there. I, I put some on allbangles.com. Well, I didn't, but what you, there's some up on allbangles.com right now. Um, so if you are looking for that, it's certainly out there. That said, I was impressed by how the Bengals responded because this was an all out, like just huge scuffle with like 55 players, both defenses going at it and back up the or offense and defense going at it and backups were on the field and it became like a, a potential brawl. It got broken up pretty quickly. Yeah. And then the Bengals, they were able to rebound and I think continue to frustrate the Packers. And like I said, we'll get more into that actual defense and what took place on the field in just a second. And so Jenkins got frustrated and smacks DJ Reader's helmet after a play. And I don't know about you, Jake. You've been here all week now, like for a week. There are probably zero guys, including 6'8 Orlando Brown Jr that I would choose to smack or, or want to smack less in that locker room than DJ Reader. DJ Reader is an animal, and he's probably the strongest player on the team. And so go on down the list from Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase to Orlando Brown Jr. to Cordell Bulls. I'm not saying I would want to smack any of them, but the last person I would want to smack is DJ Reader. And uh, Jenkins got kicked out of practice. And afterwards, Reader made some interesting comments, one of which was, man, that man didn't want to practice anymore. Yes. That man didn't want to practice anymore. Yeah. And uh, so he was casually walked to the locker room. That was my favorite of the quotes. He also took to Twitter right away. Like, before I think you even got into the locker room. I didn't even see this. He tweeted, as I was sitting down back in the media room, he tweeted roughly, he's J-A-G, which he said to you guys at his locker. Oh. He's J-A-G, just a guy. So DJ Reader making his feelings known about Elton Jenkins. He's actually a pretty good player. He, he is. He said, had fun, though. It was a little humid out there. <laughs> it was humid. It was, there was one moment of a breeze that felt really nice. Outside of that, it wasn't, like, terribly hot, but, man, it was a sticky day. And, and it's this is such an intense day, and as we get into breaking down a bunch of stuff from today's run practice, I want to make it clear here. The starters, the ones... Got way more reps today yeah. than they're getting the rest of the preseason, even if they played a half in the preseason. They got a ton of reps, and it was really good work. And so super beneficial, I think, for this Bengals team. And with that, I think the stage is set. The Let's stage. talk defense. The defenses were, I think, for both teams, better than the offenses today for different reasons, I think. We can talk about some of the standouts on defense for the Bengals who – there are a number of guys we can talk about there. There also are some positives on the offensive side of the ball. It's not all bad news for the Bengals, but we'll we'll give you the impartial view as we try to always do your lock on Bengals coming up. Today's show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. August is here, and you know what that means. It is officially fantasy football drafting month, and you can get championship ready with their best bowl league. And it's awesome because it's one live sneak draft, no waivers, no trades. They set your best lineup every week. And right now you can try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. The largest fantasy football contest is all of all time is back. It's even better than before with $15 million in prizes, including a $3 million cash prize going to the winner. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July. So don't wait around. Get underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up with promo code locked on and you'll get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks again that's promo code locked on 
at underdogfantasy.com or the App Store. Again, use promo code locked off. Let's dive into the big defensive takeaways as a couple guys really stood out. There were splash plays for a number of players or some very interesting notes as far as alignment and different packages. We saw a lot of people have been asking about safeties. We have some notes on safety alignment, Miles Murphy's usage, very interesting as well. But the stars of the practice, at least from my point of view, James, and feel free to tack on here if you have different players in mind. But DJ Reader, who we just talked about, had a very good practice. Trey Hendrickson had two sacks in 11-on-11s that I saw while I was walking over to the field where the defense was working. So I might have missed other great plays from Trey Hendrickson. That includes one where he actually grabbed Jordan Love's jersey. Again, things got a little testy after that one. That didn't cause one of the brawls, though, of nights, which is unbelievable. It should have. I. If, if I'm blocking for Trey or for Trey Hendricks and for Jordan Love and Trey Hendrickson does that, you have to start something. And they did not. That was wild. That was wild. And Mike Hilton, great play in the red zone, intercepted a bubble screen of all things. And that's a great pick six opportunity when you, whenever you can get a, a screen picked off. Those were the three that, that stood out the most to me in terms of impact splash plays. Did anyone else stand out to you, Jerry? Well, Mike Hilton also had a pass breakup on Christian Watson. That certainly deserves. Um, so it's good breaks. in this practice with Watson. Yeah, Watson was good. Uh, Joseph Osai had a tackle for loss as well. And he, in the backfield on the quarterback keeper, uh, DJ Turner had a really nice day, multiple plays. He did get beat for a touchdown, but uh, overall, I think you saw that it translated. Miles Murphy had a sack and, and made multiple plays. Tyson Anderson had a nice pass breakup. So there were uh, there were a lot of guys that stood out and a lot of a lot of plays made by this defense and and that is just talking to the guys in the locker room and by the way no Logan Wilson but talking to the guys in the locker room and I know we talked about that but just to hammer at home they they felt like they won the day it was certainly the feeling and I think that's where some of the scuffle frustration came from on the Packers side and this defense really really good. I think you see the speed. Cam Taylor Brett had a nice play as well, pass breakup. And they weren't perfect. Like some of these guys, Cam Taylor Brett got beat for a touchdown by Watson. Like that stuff happens. But the defense was also making its fair share of plays. And the alignments are interesting too. And I think we should go there next. Let's start with the safeties. A lot of people talk about the safeties, bringing up the safeties. What's going on with Jordan Battle? What's happening? Dex Hill, Nick Scott. They did the three safety look for a couple of snaps during 11 on 11s and We've talked a lot about how Nick Scott was the deep safety. Yeah. He was not. He was lined up at the nickel. Jordan Battle was in the box, and Dax Hill was the deep safety, kind of showing off his versatility a bit. And it was a couple plays that included a Jordan Love incompletion. They didn't get any yards during this three-safety look. And then Nick Scott came off the field for a snap, and it was Battle and Hill, and Hill remained the deep safety. So we saw it earlier this week. Now you see it again with uh, live bullets essentially going against a uh, first-team offense. They heard us. They heard us talking about Dax and the line, and they're like, you know, we're going to show these guys that Dax is going to line up deep in these three safety looks too. And then there you go. Um, also, just along the lives of the defense being good, this comes on the heels of Zach Taylor's presser today when he praised the defense's general intelligence. He called them veteran me like inventing the word veteran-y, yep. the ability for them to adjust on the fly, to bounce back, to, to keep their heads level, to, to play intelligent football, really high praise for their football IQ. And I think you're going to see that show up. This is a group that's had great continuity outside of those safeties, and you know we'll see how that goes as, as they continue to work in different looks and, and show more versatile packages with those safeties. Part of this is Jordan Battle's been hurt, and he's, he's now back working in teamwork and, and back to practice ahead of this preseason game and hopefully gets a lot of a lot of plays and a lot of reps in the preseason game. Other defensive alignment notes that I think are interesting, defensive line, Miles Murphy. A lot of folks have been curious about the Bengals' first-round pick. You mentioned that he had a sack, and that's a nice play for him. I, I think I saw him get outside a, a tackle on another play that wasn't called a sack that, that looked like a pretty nice pass rush as well. But interestingly, working all over the place on the there was a play where Trey Henderson goes out, Joseph Osai in this 
particular package. This is a Joseph Osai three tech inside of uh, Trey, Trey Hendrickson on the right side package that we saw last year from the Bengals on third downs from time to time and in two minute situation. Trey goes off, Miles Murphy comes in, and on this particular player set of plays, he was on the edge with Osai working at three tech. And if they can both play both of those spots, that's kind of exciting. Right, the ability for them to switch and move around as needed to take advantage of matchups where they want to take advantage of matchups to use the respective respective athleticism of both players on various stunts, twists, that sort of stuff, and having that behind Trey Hendrickson, who we got some, I think, vintage blackout Trey on that on that jersey tug, and we saw really good practice from Trey Hendrickson going against uh, some some good competition in the Green Bay Packers in this joint practice. That, that's some exciting depth. We've talked about that edge depth quite a bit, and we've wondered who's going to kick inside in different spots, and they have some options there now that we've seen them try throughout these practices. Yeah, it's good to see because um, to me, if they're going to maximize Miles Murphy as a rookie, you need him to be able to contribute in a variety of ways across that defensive line, and, and I think he's shown now the ability to do that, or he finally got to a point at, at edge where they're like, all right, we can start to move him inside and give him a little. Friday is going to be huge for him as well, just continuing to get reps and experience. But I love it. I think that it, it's become very clear that Cam Sample just continues to develop and make plays. He's a problem in, in a good way, the best way for the Bengals defense. Like these guys continue to grow, and uh, and he's another one. So I like it. I like the fact that he was in for Trey because Trey can't be on the field as much as he was last year. You need one, hopefully, he can keep him healthy. Two, you want to make him more efficient and, and so he can get after the quarterback and break his own sack record. Hopefully he gets 18 sacks this year and is just dominant. And to do that could mean less snaps so he has more in the tank when he is on the field. So it's a really good time for Miles. Yeah, when you have depth at the edge position and you can keep guys fresh, those offensive tackles are playing the entire game. And you can rotate guys that have athleticism, that have the ability to bend the corner, that have the ability to get to the quarterback. You look at a whole lot of teams, teams like the Philadelphia Eagles, for example, that are very deep on the defensive line. These things can matter. They can matter in playoff football. And so you hope that you see some continued development from this youth for the Cincinnati Bengals. Zach Carter included. I know we haven't talked about him too much today. He has had his moments throughout camp. Excited to see him and him in the preseason as well in this game against the Packers in particular. As this is the one with the closest proximity. See how he does in terms of the pass rushing stuff and then how his development is trending going into this season. I think it's time. Want to talk about the offense? It's time to talk a little offense. And even though I think the Packers defense did maybe win the day against the Bengals offense, there's a lot of good as well. So it's just not all peaches and cream for the Bengals offense. So let's do that and start with the trenches. How did Jonah Williams do? Find out. Let's talk about the trenches. This is one place where I thought the Bengals had a Pretty good day. At right. least two or thumbs up. A lot of the guys that, that we've been watching closely, the guys that we're expecting to be starters, and that starts, I think, with John Williams, who acquitted himself quite well in the one-on-ones and had a nice practice overall. I thought Orlando Brown in the one-on-ones that I was watching while James was watching the first seven-on-seven uh, -seven period had a really nice practice, showed how hard it is to go around him. You do have to beat him with speed. He can be beat. With those elite speed guys, he can be beaten sometimes inside on good moves. But the Packers continue to try to run around the arc against Orlando Brown. And, and just, it looks like they might have had some space, but then Orlando Brown's length, he's so long that they just couldn't turn the corner. And he was able to escort them around the back of the pocket. I thought that um, Bolson had an up and down day a little bit. He was going against Kenny Clark at times. Kenny Clark, one of the premier interior defensive linemen in the NFL, he got Bolson once, but I thought Bolson was okay today. I had some good reps. And interestingly, as I look at my notes here, the, the the biggest positives outside of those starting tackles, I have four plus signs beside Deontay Smith's name. He, he had a few effective snap traps. I don't think the Packers were expecting the snap trap in the in the one-on-ones. He put some Packers on their face in, in these drills, and that's always fun to watch in the trenches. And Hakeem Adenogy, I thought, had a really good day in the one-on-ones part of practice as well. He was working inside and outside. He's been working more at guard in recent practices from what I've seen. 
The one that was a little bit tough, Jackson Carmen up and down against Lucas Van Ness in the one-on-ones, gave it up twice, I would say. Had one really good rep against Van Ness, the Packers' first-round pick as well. So up and down day for Jackson Carmen. But as far as the starters, I thought the tackles played really well. And uh, I think they still need to figure out right guard. That That's one thing. The backup right guard, I should say. Sure. Behind Alice Kappa, where they were rotating Cody Ford and uh, and, and Trey Hill today for a lot of the practice that I saw. They they have a little bit of, of work to do to, to feel better, I think, about the backup right guards. Fair. I think that's totally fair. And but also, it's a good sign for Jonah Williams that he's been, he was able to do what he did today despite not having Kappa in there. And just two guys that, that he went up against, Kingsley and Igbare, who's a high pick, was able to get him 55, and I was just writing the numbers down. And then this is the one. Preston Smith against Jonah Williams. Oh, my God. Preston Smith supposed to roll Jonah. Didn't happen. Jonah was able to to hold up very, very well. So uh, I was impressed with the trenches. And uh, let me just empty the notebook here for, for, for different things. And this is just going to be a lot of highlights that stood out. Trevor Simeon found Irv Smith Jr. for a touchdown. I have nice rep for Jonah underneath. Chase Brown had a touchdown running uh, on the left side. Sharping was the center. Ben Brown was the guard there. So that one's interesting. And let's see. We didn't, I, I didn't get to see all of the offense. I think there was one more. Oh. And then uh, Chris Evans had a nice run in the red zone uh, up the gut and uh, looked really fast through the middle of the line, which is something we haven't seen much from him. So overall, there there were some highlights. There were some lowlights because this quarterback battle, should we get to it? The, the other highlights, I guess, I'll throw in there. You have some highlights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before we talk about the quarterbacks, quarterbacks had a tough day, up and down day. Uh, would be the nice way to say that. Tyler Boyd had a touchdown in red zone. Where he didn't. Yes, uh, in the corner. Uh, in the corner of the end zone. That was a nice play for him. I thought Tyler Boyd overall had a pretty nice practice. Jamar Chase had a few catches over the middle in 11-on-11 period, in the 11-on-11 period as well. There's one really nice run for Joe Mixon uh, on the right side of the offense. So those are some of the other highlights that I can think of. But the, the quarterbacks made it. And at, and at times the offensive line, it, not the offensive line, but pass protection, I should say, they missed a couple of blitz pickups. Chase Brown also had a couple of blitz pickups, but up and down day for the rookie running back there where he had, he had one in particular that I know was a missed assignment. But even given all of that, the, the, the backup quarterback battle is going to keep going. Neither guy really separated themselves today from the other in my yeah, I, I mean, I think there's there was a lot of eh from both guys. I still, I think Trevor Simeon, if I had to, like, give an award to one winning, Trevor Simeon probably won the day by but, default. But but it wasn't by much. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's tough. And I think the games are going to matter a ton, and we'll see how they manage it. They were rotating today where Jake Browning started, and, and then after that, they, they went with Trevor Simeon, and they got about the same amount of reps with the ones. And so... We'll see. I'd give a slight edge to Trevor Simeon, but I, I don't think that that's set in stone. And it's going to be interesting to see how Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, how this offensive staff rotates these guys, how they approach the preseason with Simeon and Browning. Because I think it's still, to your point, very much up in the air. And today was the heaviest day we're going to see, as you mentioned earlier, James, for the ones in training camp practices. Because these guys aren't going to get a ton of snaps in games, you might still see the starters. I would say in some preseason action at some point this year, I think that's still undecided as far as I understand it, but wouldn't expect to see a ton. There, there will be some young guys, though. Zach Taylor said in his press conference that will play against Green Bay, some young guys that they're going to be counting on. So expect to see first, second, maybe some third-year guys playing in this game. Maybe not starters, but guys that could be rotational pieces. Uh, the other note that I, I had, uh, Brian Callahan talked to the media after practice today. You mentioned and clarified, I guess, it was for the Bengals for the most part. They did a two-minute drill uh, in 11s. They also had a heavy red zone and third down day, which isn't necessarily going to produce the the flashiest plays. This, this is generally difficult down and distance kind of work where you're you're trying to rep or you're trying to rep some of the some of the more challenging instances of situational offense. And that that was a big part of it, is they were trying to work situational stuff on offense today there wasn't a whole lot of vertical stuff for the Bengals 
that there weren't a lot of vertical opportunities for the Bengals in this practice on offense. And that's probably why, maybe one of the reasons why T wasn't out there necessarily if he's dealing with anything. Uh, I asked him, by the way, he's fine. So I think he's fine with me sharing that too. So we'll see there. But uh, yeah, I think the offense, if nine was out there, I think this would have been a blowout. That it would have been pretty one-sided. And I, I, that's the difference is, is when you have your backup quarterback, it changes a lot. And uh, also shout out to Sean Clifford, Cincinnati native, was on the field today practicing. He was a fifth-round pick by the Packers practicing against the Bengals. That's got to be a cool uh, a cool feeling for him. So shout out to him. Exciting stuff coming. Green Bay may play some starters against the Cincinnati Bengals in preseason game number one. We'll get into more as far as what we're going to be watching in preseason game number one in our next episode. We've got a game preview, our first game preview of the preseason while we're working on getting the regular season form here on Lockdown Bengals. I think we hit the ground running. I think it was strong, strong first game preview uh, of the year. Well, we'll have that coming your way for tomorrow's show. And then we got a preseason game. Until next time, thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Who day? And have a good one.